In April, you will open an exhibition, solo exhibition at the Gagosian Gallery in Rome. And strangely enough, like both architectures, the, the architecture that you will create um, in, uh, at the Turbine Hall and the architecture that you find in Rome, they're like some sort of elliptical architecture. Uh, they kind of resemble the same shape. So the title of the show in Rome is going to be Marks and Whispers. What can you tell me about this show in Rome and the way that you had the idea to bring together these red paintings for the first time uh, together? If I'm not wrong, these are paintings that date more than some of them, they date more than 10 years ago, even more. 15. 15. Yeah. So it's a kind of a very comprehensive archaeological span of one specific, not just body of work, but one specific sensibility of the work. Yeah. I mean, I think even before, like, um, I think like there are many, many aspects to, you know, that, that got me to that conclusion. I think one of them is, is the idea of drawing. When I had the knowledge that the art was a way of life, uh, as a way to exist, and, and not, not economically speaking, but just uh, uh, as a way to survive um, in a, from, a, you know, from, a, from a human point of view, um, I, I said that, you know, in, in, in this very, like, uh, crude way, I said, well, you know, if, if there was nothing, if there was, if, if there was no means, if there, were, if there were no physical means, if there were no financial means, that um, I could go somewhere, I could go to a, uh, I could go to the lobby of a, uh, you know, a bank, or I could go to, and then I'll be able to find a red or a black or a blue pen, and that, it, it is such a, with this very basic, almost like survival tools, I'll be able to be and to, and to live. And then coming forward, you know, the, as, as frequencies has kind of begun to be studied. And then looking at those canvases as, you know, I, I like to call them telegrams, you know, like that I'm, I'm reading for the first time these canvases and, and I'm not seeing them collectively anymore. I'm not seeing them as these fragmented, you know, uh, geographies, but I'm seeing them as, a, as, as the individual, you know, um, child from X location saying certain things in this very basic way. And, and I wanted to reply. I want to strip back also the way I, I, I respond and I, the way I communicate. I think that's what the, the, the show means and that's what I wanted to construct with the show. I think also I wanted to to think uh, uh, as, I, as I very, as I do usually in, in this idea of the arena, you know, which is quite literally an arena, the space, but also the arena of uh, a performance or that, you know, we're witnessing something. And that something could be virtuous, but it could also be tragic. In Rome, you are designing the show in a way that because of the, uh, the, the paintings, they occupy the space, they uh, create a path, they create again, once again, an architecture within the architecture. So the, the body of the viewers is activated and uh, the most of the time I will be standing in front of one painting. It is true that my gaze will capture um, portions of other paintings, but I'm basically like, and again, you just mentioned the idea of being a witness. I'm actually standing still in front of one painting. So there is, it is something that you've always often done, you know, like a, um, specializing uh, the, the wall works in the space, providing um, this kind of a more dynamic participation of the viewer in the space. So I wonder, you know, what is the meaning for you of just like not just letting the work standing on the walls, hanging on the walls, but just bringing into the space and creating this kind of a more confrontational or intimate uh, 
perception of them in the viewer. I think that that's something that I've uh, internalized now that, you know, sometimes when, you know, the paintings, of course, the, the paintings uh, always happen in privacy. They always happen in the studio. You know, that privacy is essential. However, you know, gestural or performative they might seem, or like however physical, they're, they're not part of any performance. They, you know, they're, they're, you know these, these very intimate endeavors, um, you know, they allude to drawing too, so that, that there is that kind of intimacy embedded in them. I, I thought that this, you know, the, the space was this, this perfect opportunity to, to present a kind of performance, you know, to, you know, that this works are, you know, that I want them to be a protagonist in a way, in a, in a, in a performance. Before you were mentioning how many meanings the experience of each individual can project on the blue of the sea and something very similar can be said to the red. It's, a, it's an extremely vital, exciting color, but it is also like a, an alarming color. And you're talking about the idea of the arena, which can also bring something extremely positive, like for example, a confrontation of different opinions. The arena is not just a, the place of a performance, but it's also like a place where we can actually have a dialogue from different standing points. But you will be in Rome and in the ancient Rome, the arena was also like the, the place where the spectacle of violence, the spectacle of pain would be offered to the people. So again, we are in a, in a polyphony of meanings that just a primary color can evolve. So I just wonder uh, if, if you see this as well in the red, if you see this in these paintings that they can be both very energetic but also very alarming. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, as I said, that the you know, they are these, these entities in space, this kind of, I mean, entities, witnesses, references, um, and it's absolutely inevitable. You know, again, even the title of this particular painting, uh, you know, Fields of Spirits, you know, this idea of marks and whispers, you know, you can also allude to desperation yeah. or a kind of desperate, you know, voice or something, a whisper. You know, what, what does it mean to be in tune with you know, the current moment, you know, and how, how can one, from a position of uh, possibility and responsibility, be a, um, a kind of mirror, be a witness of that, uh, of, a, of, you know, of a current tragic reality, and, you know, use what the tools available to to speak and to mark, you know, to mark that moment in time. Ancient Rome is contemporary society, you know, and, and I think the same tools are at play, you know, this idea of uh, entertainment as, as viscera and vice versa. You know, I think also there's this idea that we don't learn, learn from history too, you know, that it's, you know, that this, this show can potentially assist also in 50 years' time and still be something of, of uh, uh, or that this, this show could have existed 50 years ago. You know, like somebody recently asked me, you know, like, what about, you know, some of these marks or gestures in relation to 60 years ago? Well, so, well that's nothing. I mean, it's, yeah. we're living 60 years ago now. So that the, this is the first show in which this is the case now. This show is like the first telegram. Like I'm, I'm sending like that first telegram out, and that message is a message of, of a contemporary reality. That's a wonderful way to uh, to end this conversation. I'd like to to thank you for like uh, all the thoughts that, that you shared with me. Thank you for for uh, your time. Always always a, an honor and a pleasure. Thank you.